Hi, I'm Daniel. I work with Curity together with Travis. Uh, I'm at our Stockholm office. I just li live just outside of Stockholm, uh, a little bit of commute. And I spend my days with uh, almost exclusively OAuth and OpenID Connect projects. Um, I'm, I'm working with our customers implementing OAuth and OpenID into their platforms. And that makes me uh, have to work with a lot of different legacy systems. So it's not only OAuth and OpenID Connect, but uh, the main focus of it is always OAuth. Uh, and as Travis said, I also do the OAuth and OpenID Connect workshops together with Nordic APIs. So in these projects that we've been working on, we've seen a lot of developers struggling with uh, the new modern way of building web applications, the single page application, that doesn't necessarily have a backend, uh, no way of storing tokens securely, and no way of uh, authenticating against an OAuth server in a secure way. Uh, and usually the only choice that a developer has that is going to implement a single page application is the OAuth implicit flow. And the OAuth implicit flow is a flow that relies heavily on redirects, which will destroy your single page, the state of your single page, when you have to open up a new window to do authentication to get your token. Uh, so this is something that we've seen at our customers and something that we try to build easier for, for them. So just a quick look on how implicit flow works. We have a single page application uh, on our left and we have an OAuth server on our right. And the uh, single page needs some kind of permission at a resource for the current user, right? The user needs to delegate access to a resource. So the page has some kind of login button, You've probably all seen it before. And when you click that, you will get redirected over to the OAuth server. And the OAuth server will then Authenticate the user uh, in any means necessary, and then ask the user, this application wants to have your permission to access these resources. Is this okay? Like a little consent screen. And if the user then agrees to this, it delegates the permissions, it will redirect you back to the, app the application. Together in the in the redirect, you will also send you a token in the URL at the fragment part of the URI. So then the, the page needs to parse that URL and get out the access token and can then start to use it. So since this is based on entirely on redirects, you have to point your entire user agent to these URLs to be able to log into your user and get your access token. So if you're using a single page application, that becomes pretty hard to handle, right? You need to uh, be able to pick up your state you had after you authenticated, and you need to be able to store your token in a secure way. And all of these things becomes pretty complex. And usually when we start these types of projects, this is the first time that the uh, developer is seeing OAuth. So, doesn't really have the knowledge on how to protect against certain attacks and how to store tokens in a secure way and how to use them. There's some way to get away from the redirects, like putting the entire flow inside of an iframe. Uh, that will uh, mitigate against the redirects and you will have your, uh, you can put everything inside a box and make it easier for the user to see what you're uh, authenticating and then not lose your state. But then you kind of have to invent your own way of communicating with that iframe because uh, the parent page doesn't really have access to what's inside of the iframe. And that token that comes back in the redirect in the end has to be communicated to the parent page somehow. And also an iframe needs some security work applied to be able to trust that this is only being able to load at the client's domain. 
So in my example, maybe example.com needs to be an OAuth client. We need to make sure that this client is only able to be loaded on example.com and somewhere else is we're gonna break out the AI frame or just disallow that contact. And this is solvable, of course. We've done it at a bunch of different customers and just getting, a, getting there is a little bit different each time. So what we wanted to do it was to make that standardized. We want to make that possible to do it the same way at every customer and allow others to use our knowledge in it. Big thing about this is that OAuth is hard. And the first time you see it, it might be overwhelming with all the endpoints that are in play, uh, all the different to token types that are used. And there are a bunch of different parameters that also need validation on client side. So we see dev struggle with this. And uh, usually on the more, the bigger OAuth flows, there's all, all those different libraries that help you with uh, using all of this and validating the correct things and sending to the correct endpoints. But when you use an implicit flow, that's pretty hard to do right now. So that leads us to think that this is something that needs to be solved server side. OAuth is a great thing and that's something we should be keep on building, but just the, the single page application need to uh, have its, its own flow more or less to make it a lot easier for devs and make it secure. Uh, OAuth is, there's a lot of details in OAuth that you can get wrong, so it should be done by OAuth professionals and not the dev developers that see it for the first time. Uh, so that's why we came up with something that we call the assisted token flow. Uh, it's uh, right now, it's a draft specification, and it builds on top of OAuth. Uh, we use everything that is OAuth today, and we add some new, uh, some new flows and endpoints to make this into a single page flow. It uses iframes for communication between the page and the OAuth server, and it uses the JavaScript post message for communication between the frame and the parent page. And we define a new endpoint that allows us to remove all the parameters that we are not needing in this, in this flow. Uh, OAuth ha already has a bunch of endpoints. We have the authorized and token endpoints that are used in the code flow. <laughs> Uh, and the token flow, the, the token endpoint is used in a bunch of different flows and has already a lot of parameters that we don't need right now. So we thought it was better to create a new endpoint to be able to strip out everything that we don't need. So in the basic basis flow, uh, the only mandatory parameter is actually client ID. We can get rid of all of the rest ones. So let's have a click. Uh, look at the flow. And this first flow here, we, we can imagine that we have a user that's already authenticated at the OAuth server, so we don't need to put in any authentication right now. But we have a web page that is requiring uh, some permission at a resource server somewhere. It needs to have users' permissions to access that on behalf of the user. So. First step, the page up and opens up an iframe and points that to the OAuth server. It's a hidden iframe, it's not visible for the user at all. Uh, just points it to the, this new endpoint, the assisted token endpoint. And in this case, only the client ID is needed. The OAuth server can serve an HTML page that is empty, more or less. The only contents of it is a script that will perform a post message up to the parent page containing uh, the result of the transaction. So when that page is loaded in the iframe, a post message is performed and sends up a success message in this case. 
that contains the access token. So a success message that just, here's an access token, it's valid for this long, and here are the scopes that you got. Uh, this is also a little bit different from standard OAuth, core OAuth. Uh, in core OAuth, you have to decide, we have to ask for the scopes you will get. Uh, so that makes the scope parameter mandatory. But we wanted to flip that a little bit and make it optional. So if you don't ask for scopes, you will get all of the scopes configured for that particular client. So in my case, I have a client at the OAuth server that is allowed to ask for the read and write scope. I can ask for a specific scope, but if I don't ask for anything, I get all of them, so read and write. The page can then just parse this message, take out the access token, and start using it to collect the data from the resource that it needs. So that's pretty easy. It's only one request. You get back your access token. You get a little bit of metadata about it. Uh, but it's, of course, it's a little bit cheating because we most likely need to authenticate the user. So let's have a look at how that could look like. Same premise. Uh, page that needs some kind of permission at a resource server. We open up the hidden iframe, pointed to the OAuth server with only the client ID. We get back a web page. This time it's not entirely empty. Uh, we get a script that will perform a post message and send up an event to the parent page saying, we're actually authenticating now. And the page will also consist of the HTML to build up the login page. In this case, it's a username and password form. So the parent page can then see that event and then make the iframe visible for the user. We pop up a window or whatever seems best at the time. In this case, we have a modal dialog uh, with username and password login. It could be whatever type of login. It could be multi-factor. It could require the user to register. Whatever happens inside that iframe, uh, as long as you're inside that iframe, you can do whatever you want. But when the user now is finished with the login, uh, the same success page is loaded with the post message with that will give you the access token. Uh, the post message will fire off the event. The page will uh, get it. And you can close down the iframe. And we got to the access token. Still pretty easy, I think. Uh, res it resembles the implicit flow a lot, of course, because it's the same idea. We just put it into iframes and made it possible to work with in a single page environment. But of course, we need to work some security here. Uh, this client that I just showed you uh, needs to be registered at the OAuth server, of course, but it also needs to be registered with a domain. So this a client can only run at example.com. And the way to enforce that is by, for the, uh, the OAuth server to send HTTP headers and use content security policies that gives the browser the means to enforce that we can only load this iframe on example.com. Any attempt to iframe this in another page will break out of the iframe and then just load the page, uh, point your full user agent against this page instead. And the same type of security applies for the post message. For the post message that uh, is communicating between iframes, it just, if you, we don't specify which, which domain is it supposed to go to, it would just uh, distribute it to all iframes on the page. So if you have some kind of ad network or something like that on your page, you would most likely get the access token, which is not what we want. So the same domain that we have already registered at the OAuth server needs to be used in the post message as well. There's a target parameter. You just add that to along with your event. It's not that hard. There's also the page probably wants to store the token somewhere uh, so that it can be used for uh, lo longer than the lifetime of the JavaScript, right? 
Um, we have basically two options. We can use the browser's local storage, which is accessible from JavaScript, so you can both write and read from, it, from your scripts, uh, which of course have its own security uh, implications, and the browser is helping a lot with the current origin, origin policy and things like that. Uh, but we tend to uh, recommend the cookie storage because you get some advantages from that. Uh, the script can store the token in a cookie with the domain and the path of the assisted token endpoints. And you can also put in the expiry of the token to that cookie, which will get the effect that in all uh, interactions with the assisted token endpoint, with the a valid token will be sent to that OAuth server. So that means that the OAuth server can take actions on that. So even if you reload your page and you start going to that, uh, you start your login flow, your valid token will be sent to the OAuth server. OAuth server can see that you already have a valid token. You don't need to bother the user again. It can just give you back the same token or issue a new one so to the OAuth server. And and it also can take other actions on the token. Like uh, we can set policies that the access token is supposed to have a certain amount of scopes from when the first time you authenticated. And two minutes after that, we should drop the uh, stronger scope, so to say, like the right scope. You only want to have the right scope when you first authenticated. And two minutes after that, we should drop it. So if we always send the access token to the assisted token endpoint, we allow the OAuth server to do th such things. So how is this easy? I've been talking a lot of different things that needs to be handled, like the opening and closing of the iframes, with token storage, validating of parameters. All of those things are things that needs to be handled on the client, right? So that's really the point we need to move this into the server. And by standardizing this, and how is this is supposed to handle, it makes it a lot easier to build libraries that can be hosted on the OAuth server itself. So for the front-end developer, we always say, use this library and you should be good to go. And instead of saying, use implicit flow, you need to protect against this. So by using our implementation, I must say, this is implementation of the specification and uh, integrating together with an OAuth server, we have this code. Uh, it's really only about some configuration. We set up which origin we had. We set up our client ID. We initiate the library, and then we can start using it for getting a token. So uh, about eight lines of code or something like that. Uh, this is something that we can work with, right? We can go to new developers and say that, just use this code and you will be able to get an access token. All of the token storage problems, all of your iframing problems will be taken care of by this library. And this is using jQuery. Uh, we have other examples on our GitHub account if you wanna look at it. I think we have Angular and React and things like that. So this is a draft specification still, but as I said, we've built this together with our customers. So we have customers already running this uh, since a couple of years back. Uh, the draft is available on ITF, so we really want people to start using it and help us with reviewing this and make this into a full RFC. Uh, we have more examples on GitHub if you want to have a look and please help out with reviewing this. That's pretty much all I got. So if you want to have any more questions, want to talk to this, uh, more about this with me, you can hit us up on the booth. We'll be gladly speaking about this.